Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters, thrilling chapters in the lives of men and women who dared and won in their fight for the West. The entire Pacific Northwest and the state of Washington in particular are eternally grateful to the vision and courage of Arthur A. Denny and those who helped the state of Washington emerge from a wilderness to earn for herself the title, The Amazing Commonwealth of the Northwest. On the 13th of November, 1851, 24 pioneers, 12 adults and 12 children, were among the passenger list of the schooner exact, Captain Folger commanding. All but this little group were bound for Queen Charlotte Island to hunt gold. As Arthur A. Denny peers through the mist, he sees the strange, unfriendly-looking shore of their future home. Mrs. Denny, bravely fighting back the tears, says to her husband, Arthur. I know. I know what you're going to say, dear. You're homesick for our farm in Illinois. I'm not complaining. But when we left Illinois, you said we'd never have to pioneer again. You said others had broken the trail in this wilderness. Well, dear, it, it does look pretty bleak, but we can't turn back now. Another hour and Captain Folger will be putting us ashore. My brother David and young me, Terry, landed on Puget Sound last September. There should be at least one cabin up in, in this new paradise. Paradise? What kind of paradise can anyone make out of nothing but miles and miles of ocean and brush and forest? Coming into Puget Sound! We're coming into Puget Sound! Well, the schooner is entering Puget Sound, dear. Oh, just wait till the sun comes out. It'll brighten up everything. We'll have to wait a long time for that to happen. Just now, I'm not even thinking of you. Louise and Margaret are old enough, I suppose, to bear some sort of hardship. But little Roland is just two months old. I know. No, dear, but it's too late to turn back even if we wanted to. Whatever divine providence has in store for us, we must take. When that little doubt tormented party of 24 pioneers were lowered into the boat from the schooner exact, nothing swept up to them but a forest rising from the gray waste of Puget Sound over all of which towered snow-capped mountains. The landing was effected, and boats were dragged up on the shore. And once on the shore... Oh, Margaret, don't cry. Louise, please behave. Mother knows you're cold and hungry, but Father's doing the best he can. Mrs. Denny, I'll take care of the girls. Oh. You have your hands full with little Rollins. Thank you, Mrs. Lowe. If you can find some sort of shelter for the children under the trees... Go with Annie Lou, children. Go ahead, darling. I'll watch out for them as best I can. Oh, thank you. Come, girls. Come with Annie Lowe. Now, we're all hungry and wet, too, but we mustn't give way. Oh, dear God. Dear God, guide and guard us. There, there, there. <laughs> Steady. Steady, dearest. Arthur, did you see your brother David anywhere? No. I can't find hide or hair of him. You don't suppose that he and Lee Terry have been surprised by Indians I, and, and... I pray God that both of the lads are safe. Oh, yes. 
I'll call to him again. Hello! Hello! David Denny! Hello! Hello! David Denny! Hello! Hello! Lee Terry! Dearest, we'd better get under these trees. Okay. Now, down on this log. Here, I'll, I'll throw the soil skin of mine over your head so it'll shield the babies from the rain. Oh, they've unloaded the boats now, and they're, they're pulling up. Yeah, they're, they're steady, dear, steady. But this may be the last time we'll see white people till spring. Oh, steady, dear. Here, here's my hand. Hold tight. Goodbye, Lord, Goodbye. 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 Stop it. Arthur. Yes? There's David. David. Hello. Hello, David. David. Oh, brother Arthur. Hello, oh. David. Well, oh, why, this David. little one half buried under this coal <laughs> yeah. This is our son, Roland, <laughs> the youngest citizen of this new community, two months old. <laughs> Where's Lee Terry? Did you get the cabin up? Lee Terry's off in the woods hunting some grub, oh. which has been mighty scarce. We got one cabin up, plenty of timber fell for others, brush gathered for fire, springs located, <laughs> good lots staked out. Well, dear. <laughs> Things look a little brighter, don't they? Well, if I could just know there was one cow around here to ensure milk for the baby, I'd be happy, even though I am wet. Well, we're all pretty soggy. Guess we'd better start some good roaring fires going here. I'll leave the party to where the cabin is. Guess that'll be the center of the town. But surely in this new town there must be at least one cow. <laughs> no cows, sis. But we've got some mighty fine meaty clams here. Clams? But you don't get milk from clams. <laughs> I'll grant you that. But you do get clam broth from clams. Oh. Now, you give little Rollins some of that, and he'll get meat on his bones <laughs> fast enough. <laughs> Friends, Arthur Denny will speak. Thank you, friends. Friends, the Lord has carried us through our first winter. That's you and I and our loved ones. But I think it's high time we got a name for our new town. We've got everything under the sun here for future prosperity. Timber, water power, ocean. And it looks like we've got a harbor, too. A harbor for a big ship? Yes, Mr. Bell, Mr. Board, and myself took an Indian canoe with a bundle of horseshoes and a clothesline made sounds in the bay to see if it was deep enough for a harbor. And it was. <laughs> we pioneers have something to crow about now. And we might as well tell the world about it. But first, first a name for our city. All right. Who's thought of a name? Well, who's thought of a name? <laughs> it's too bad we didn't invite our wives to this meeting or we would have had a dozen names. <laughs> yeah, I reckon we couldn't do wrong to follow in the footsteps of New York. New York has a mighty good sound to me. All right. Charles C. Terry says New York. Well, not quite. That's bragging on ourselves just a little too soon. I'm for being some modest. Why not call it New York Elkie? New York Elkie? Well, what's the meaning of Elkie? Short for alkali? <laughs> I'm downright serious about that name, Elkie. It's an Indian word from the Shinu tribe. Means by and by. <laughs> all right. All right. All in favor of New York Elkie, which will mean... New York, by and by, show hands. <laughs> All right, I'll raise mine, and that'll make it unanimous. And so the city fathers in this wilderness on the shore of Puget Sound declare our town site to be called New York Alke. <laughs> I'm still a pioneer mother, Mrs. Lowe. Even two years after we have a full-fledged growing town, I never unlock my door until I know who it is. <laughs> well, I'm not afraid of Indians anymore. 
Just the other day, one curious redskin sat cross-legged on the doorstep of my cabin watching me bake my bread. You mean you didn't even watch him out of the corner of your eye? Well, hardly out of the corner. I needed the dough facing him. (laughs) And I suppose put the loaves in the oven still facing the Indian. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. Just look Mm. at the rosy cheeks on that boy of yours. (laughs) Thanks to Washington milk or uh, clam broth. (laughs) The girls are thriving, too. More cabins being erected every day. Town's growing. Mm -hmm. Soon be outgrowing all this pioneer effort. Yes. And its name, too. I hear that some of the newer citizens don't like New York, Alki. Oh? They say it hasn't any character. Oh, oh that's Arthur. Why, Arthur, dear. You look as though you had some wonderful news. Well, I have, dear. Oh, greetings, Mrs. Lowe. Oh, hello, Mr. Denny. Well, I must be going. Oh, no, stay, please. It's great news for everybody. You ever remember me speaking of Mr. Henry L. Yesler? Why, yes, I, I think so. Isn't he a capitalist from the East? Well, I don't know whether he's a capitalist or not, but he's wanting to put up a sawmill, a steam oh. sawmill. The first in the Northwest, mind you, right here in New York, Elkie. Why, that's wonderful news. Well, I should say so. Well, we'll, we'll all have to readjust our boundaries so as to give water frontage to him, but it'll oh, be worth it. Yes. That doesn't make this town boom. I don't know what will. Oh, my, my. Before we know it, we won't be pioneers anymore. City folk. <laughs> Any more news about changing the name of the town? Oh, yes. You know, there's an Indian chief called Seal who's been very friendly and a big help to the white settler. This coming January, there's going to be a vote in the legislature of the Oregon Territory. I reckon they'll want to honor him in some way or another. Looks like our town's going to be the county seat. Oh, and just think if I'd had my way about it two years ago, John Lowe would have been a gold miner in Queen Charlotte Island. <laughs> But Mrs. Denny's brave smile helped me through that first winter. Oh, but Arthur and I have a little secret about that smile. <laughs> it wasn't so brave that morning of November 13, 1851, <laughs> was it, dear? <laughs> well, we're all getting on all right. Well, we must be. Well, even the legislature is going to worry about us. We're all just wondering on whose land claim the town was really located. But we won't be concerned about that until... January 6th, 1853. On this day of January 6th, in the year of our Lord, 1853, before the legislature of the Oregon Territory here assembled, a law is passed enacting the following, that the county seat of King County B., and the same is hereby located at Seattle, so named in honor of Chief Seattle, on the land claim of David S. Maynard. With the name Seattle, New York County is no longer officially recognized as the name of said city in King County and future town. In the city of Seattle, there rises a simple white shaft. On one side of its base we read, birthplace of Seattle. On the other, New York County. At this place, on the 13th of November, 1851, there landed from the schooner Exact, the little colony which developed into the city of Seattle. These courageous men and women were indeed frontier fighters, conquerors of a wilderness, guides whose footsteps indeed illuminated the darkness for those who followed in the years to come. <laughs> 